Hello planters, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. But for the month of October, every single Friday, I am doing a creepy crawly video. And in my creepy crawly videos, I'm talking about odd plants, all the way to things like the dust bowl and just a bit of odd history when it comes to soil science and plant science. Today's video though is going to be just a little bit different than that and this is a current trend going on right now in the YouTube plant community where everyone um, basically goes about their normal duties um, as a plant parent whether that be repotting or whatever the case is and they tell a creepy story that they personally have had happen to them so I thought I would jump on that bandwagon mostly because I have some very overdue cuttings I need to deal with I even have some fan mail yes fan mail thank you so much Susan for this that I need to open so I thought I'd open that on camera and just have a general talk if this is something that you guys enjoy and you like having more of a Q&A sit down uncut look at me just doing some household chores then let me know in the comments below I do not mind doing these videos at all if you ask anyone that knows me personally they will tell you I love to talk so you're just literally feeding something that I already like to do in my spare time so before we get into the story I'm just gonna go over quickly kind of what supplies I'm using um, what plants I'm repotting why and all that fun stuff if you're just here for the story then be sure to check out the timestamp below and just skip cut to the chase in my bucket I like to use these nectarine peach buckets um, they have holes on the bottom they have holes on the top lots of airflow for my cuttings and then I have vermiculite in the bottom here I have about half an inch and then just paper towel on the bottom so that the vermiculite doesn't fall out through these slits I find that these containers are the perfect balance between humidity and airflow so that's why I like to reuse these if you can reuse, reuse plastic in any way it's always obviously environmentally friendly and preferred so this is a nectarine container that I do reuse um, then I'm just using regular pots um, I do reuse all my pots as well I do not throw them away and I will be actually potting these into vermiculite um, and not soil. The reason for this is partially because I find soil indoors very messy. Um, but the second reason for this is it is a lot lighter and fluffier. Um, I find that the gas exchange and just kind of the air exchange between the roots is optimal when you're using vermiculite, especially when it comes to the philodendrons and the pothos that I will be repotting in this container. So that is what I will be using. And then as always with any of my potted plants, I will be putting in the nematodes. I'll leave a link down in the description for all this stuff, including the vermiculite, but especially this nematode uh, formula. I'm gonna do a whole video on nematodes as an organic method for pest control um, it doesn't smell it's literally the most ideal organic uh, control for things like fungus gnats thrips anything that's born in the soil because they're essentially bugs little worms that go around and they eat all the pest uh, larvae now you can't see these they are microscopic so besides seeing some little orange pellets you won't even know that it's in your soil, but trust me, they're working behind the scenes for you. So this stuff is really great. I use it indoors and out. Both, uh, both types of containers can use it. I find it particularly useful if you have a lot of issues with caterpillars and stuff. This stuff is great at controlling that. It usually works if you have an outbreak, for example, within the first 48 hours. Your, your issue should be done. Now, the plants that I am repotting um, is going to be these golden pothos um they had mealybugs if i had mealybugs i actually just chop the whole plant up and i start from the beginning i don't bother too much with trying to control the issue um mostly because it's a huge job and i don't want to put any of my other plants that i have in my collection at risk so this is literally it um, I just chop them up, put them in a prop box and start from brand new. So he wasn't very big, so I wasn't super upset about it, but that's just what I do. This is a Marble Queen that I got from Home Depot that had root rot. 
And so I actually pulled him out and propagated and cut him up. And then I have a philodendron Brazil, which I've had for many, many moons that I need to do up as well. This one is pretty old. And so I actually had to, um, I chopped him up totally into a billion little pieces and I've slowly just been repotting him into different pots to make some more of him. So he was really long and leggy and I was just done with that look. So this is what we're moving up in the world to. I will be unboxing my fan mail at the very end of the video. So be sure to stay tuned for that just in case I get too obsessed with what's in here and then I don't focus for the rest of the video. Okay, let's get into the spooky part of this whole video. One important thing we should preface this whole situation with is that ever since I was a child, I've had odd incidences with the paranormal. Despite this, I still don't really believe in the paranormal. I love to think it exists, but I just, I don't think it exists. So maybe that's my issue, but that's just how I feel. Anyways, um, I growing up had an imaginary friend. I had an aunt, a great aunt that was a nun who thought I needed an exorcism as a child because I had imaginary friends and it just, kind of escalated from there. Uh, I had a few times before kind of the big scary moment where I would see things in my room. Uh, one time I claimed to see a man standing in the corner of my bedroom, kind of like inside of my dog cage, but like standing through my dog cage. Anyways, it scared me so badly. I screamed so loud that uh, my dad actually thought someone had broken into the house and began sprinting down the steps and almost tripped and fell all the way down the steps. That's how, how scared and how worked up I was. And I actually remember that night, um, I saw the guy standing beside my bed and then he kind of like lunged or like turned his head down at me smiled and then lunged or lurched at me. I can't quite remember, I was really young. You have to keep that in mind. But I remember him lunging at me and getting terrified. Um, and I tried to scream. And you know in a dream, if you ever have the dream where you can't scream, that's what happened. So I tried screaming and nothing was coming out. <laughs> of course. So when it finally did come out, it was, I was losing my mind. Like I was totally screaming, bloody murder. It was super loud. I was totally freaking out. And that's what triggered my dad to basically go flying down the steps and almost break his freaking neck. Fast forward a few years, my mother, uh, also probably the same mind as me, doesn't really believe in the paranormal, whatever the case is, bought me <laughs> a Ouija board for Christmas, bought us kids a Ouija board for Christmas. And so we would play with this Ouija board and to us it was a joke. Mostly we just thought it was a funny ha ha moment. We didn't believe in it or anything. And so because of that, we obviously didn't actually <laughs> use this thing correctly. We didn't say goodbye properly or anything like that. But one night me and my friend Kayla were playing with this Ouija board in the basement and it was a four level split. And anyone who's been in a four level split knows that there's that ledge that kind of goes around the basement. And so we were in the basement playing Ouija board and we were asking the spirit that was talking to us how it died. And so it wasn't answering us, it wasn't like spelling anything out. So we thought, oh, we got to guess. So we started guessing, were you murdered? Were you stabbed? And then finally I said, did you die in a fire? And the board went to yes, the planchette went to yes. And so I ended up screaming my face off. Kayla ended up screaming her face off. We both ended up sprinting upstairs. And before we did that, the lights, the candles that we had lit and put onto the ledge of that four level split actually went out one by one the moment it went to yes. So that was creepy. That was probably the creepiest incident to date or to date at that time for me and the paranormal. 
for years going forward, really weird stuff would happen in this house. Um, my parents still live in this house actually. And so many different stuff, like so much different stuff that just looking back now, you think that was, that was not normal. So we had a doorbell and the doorbell would actually go off when people got to the base of the road, like the base of the driveway to go into the house. How creepy is it? Like, that's so creepy. The door will go off. It would actually let us know that there was somebody there and that they were coming in. And we thought for the longest time it was actually our Auntie Christina because the doorbell would also go off in the same house every time our uncle would call, or one uncle who lived out of town. Um, moments before he would show up, the doorbell would go off and there would be nobody there. And you have to understand that the way that this house is built, there's no way to do a ding dong ditch type situation. There's a giant window in the front living room um, where you can see directly at, like you basically look at the front door because it kind of like goes out a bit. So there's that. And then the door itself has windows on it. And then there's window on the side of the door. So there's no simple like sneaking up, hitting the drawbell and running away. That is just, it's impossible. You can't do it. So that was kind of, you know, the creep factor. And after a period of time, what ended up happening was it would just get progressively worse. Um, and probably the scariest moment for me was when I was in the bathtub. And I was a teenage girl, so I liked taking my time. I liked reading magazines, because back then you didn't have cell phones. So you would read magazines or you would read a book, but usually it was magazines. And you would just relax in a bubble bath. So that's exactly what I was doing. I was just simply relaxing in a bubble bath and my dog started barking. And we had this game that we would play with our dog. And it was essentially, he would be at the top of the steps and you'd pat his paws from the lower steps. And he would kind of, you know, nip at you and bark and whatever. And it was a game we played with the dog. Every sibling played with it. A lot of the adults played the same game. And so I thought someone was playing this game with him. It sounded like someone was playing with this game with him, but the only person home was my brother. And so it was getting to the point I was telling him to stop, stop, stop. He wasn't stopping. So I actually threw on a robe, got out of the bathtub and went to go give him trouble. But by the time I opened the door, looked into the hallway, there was no one there except for Midnight, the dog. So I ended up walking down the steps to the play room where he was playing on, I think an Xbox at the time. And so I said, Morgan, can you stop bugging midnight? Like I'm trying to relax in the bathtub. And he kind of looked at me like, yeah, okay, whatever. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, I, I'm not, not playing with midnight. I don't, no idea what you're talking about. So I thought, okay, that's weird. He's just being a typical brother and he's lying. So thought nothing of it, thought he's just being a jerk and went back upstairs to make myself an iced tea to bring back to my relaxing bathtub, bathtub time. So as I was in the kitchen making my iced tea, remember it's a four level split. So my brother's on the second level from the basement I'm on the third level, which would be the main level. And then my bath was on the fourth, which would be the very top. And I'm on the second level making ice tea. And I saw out of the corner of my eye, a little boy run from the third level up to the fourth. And I thought in my head that he, my brother, ran up the steps to go hide to try to pester me again. So I was thinking he was having forethought as to how to torture me for longer. So I thought it was my brother trying to run and hide and scare me, um, preemptively trying to figure out a way to torture me even longer. So I thought I would catch him in the act and follow him to wherever I saw him or where I thought he was hiding 
and throw something at him to get him to react and stop pestering me. Have the upper hand type thing. So I turned around and went to go up the steps to the fourth level where I saw again the same shadow of a little boy, approximately my brother's age, height, everything, run into his bedroom. So yeah, like obviously this is him. It's gotta be him. So I keep following it. And then when I get to his room, I see something, again, the little boy, who I thought, literally I was convinced it was my brother. I didn't have a paranormal thought in my mind when this was happening at all which is kind of funny actually looking back on it. And I thought I saw him run between the wall and the edge of his bed, like the foot of his bed, because there was a space there at the time. He had a smaller bed, so there's a space between the end of the bed and the wall. And so I threw something, I can't remember what it would have been. It may have been like a cell phone, like a rudimentary type phone that we would have had but or a remote or something and I remember throwing it it was something that was relatively hard <laughs> that would thinking back on it probably not a good idea to throw at somebody but I threw it into the space where I thought he was hanging out and there was no reaction at all there was no owl there was no screw you there was no I'm telling mom there was no reaction and so I thought oh did I just knock him out so I went to the edge of the bed to go look to see who was there, who was hiding in between the edge of the bed, base of the bed and the wall. There was no one there. Literally no one there, nothing. But I swear, you guys, I swear there was something that had, there was, had to have been somebody there. So I don't know if we're ridiculously brave as teenagers, we must be, because I don't remember being scared at that point or thinking anything of it, I just thought, oh, whatever. He, he, whatever, who cares? And just went about my day and had my bath. And I didn't think twice about it. Looking back now, as an adult, if I saw that happen, I'd be moving. But back then, I just thought nothing of it. And it wasn't until, I'd say at least a week, if not longer after that, I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell my brother, I didn't tell my parents. I just thought my eyes were playing tricks on me and I was going crazy. Like that was basically what my brain the way I dissected it. But we were cooking supper and I was in the kitchen with my mom. And let's get real, I probably wasn't cooking. I was probably stealing food from her. And we were just chit-chatting. And I was telling her about how Morgan was being bad the one day and basically being a tattletale, saying how I thought he ran into, he was past during midnight, trying to get him to bark while I was trying to have a bath. And then I was in the kitchen making an iced tea and I thought, I swore I saw him run, run into his bedroom and hide be between the bed and the wall. And my mom, I'm not even joking, turned, stop what she was doing, turned nearly ghost white, looked at me, and said, your brother has been coming into our room in the middle of the night, crying, demanding to sleep in bed with us because he keeps seeing a little boy run into his room and run in between the foot of the bed and the wall. I am not shitting you. I didn't tell her. She didn't tell me. We didn't even have stories collide until that moment. And I started crying and I thought, no, you're joking, mom, you're lying. She's like, no, Ashley, I'm dead serious. Oh. Anyways, it never happened again. I never saw that little boy again, N nothing of that nature. However, I know my grandparents my sister and my parents are probably all watching this right now, but they can attest to the fact that I, the moment I moved out of the house, I took the Ouija boards and whatever um, else, and they haven't had anything weird happen in their house since. Like nothing weird has happened in their home. However, 
for me and my house, I don't notice anything weird, but my family has said that they get an odd feeling in this home sometimes and that they think whatever was in that house actually followed me here or is living in this home. But like I said, I've never to date had anything heavily bizarre happen in this home. I haven't even had like, yeah, I just haven't had anything that's sent off any sort of alarm bells for me. People who come in here say it gives them an uneasy feeling. And I don't know if that's just because they think I have stuff following me around. I, I'm not sure. But yeah, that is my life experience with the creepy crawly side of the world. As long as he's welcome here, he can chill out if he wants to. If he did follow me here, that's cool. I'm cool with it. Just don't touch my plants. That's all I care about. You can chill out. I'm not going to kick you out. It's cool, but just, you know, you know what I'm saying? So I hope you guys like that story. Let me know if you guys have any like ghosts or if you even believe in it. Like, I don't, do you believe in ghosts? I, even though I just said that, told you that story, I still don't believe in ghosts. Like, is that weird? I just, I would be the greatest ghost hunter on the face of the planet because I just would not react. I would think everything's fake. I would think everything's like somehow just energy transfer. Like I don't believe in spirits. I don't believe in any of that stuff. I want to so badly, like don't get me wrong. I want to believe in that stuff. I just, I don't, I just can't convince myself that it's absolutely 100% for sure real. That's just me, but. Let me know if you guys have any ghost stories or if you have any like weird things that have happened that have just made you question like, oh, that was, that was odd. Like that was definitely not in the plan. Oh, I, I'd be interested to hear what you guys say. So let's open Susan's mail. I'm super excited for this. So Susan doesn't have, correct me if I'm wrong, Susan, but you don't have any social, like you don't have Instagram, Facebook, nothing like that. So she actually emailed me because there's an email on my YouTube channel that you can email me on, um, asking for my address because she wanted to send some fan mail over. So thank you so much, Susan. This is crazy. You're going down in history as the first person ever to send me any sort of fan mail. So thank you a ton. Uh, make sure you guys say thank you to Susan in the comments as well, because I think my reaction to this is going to be extraordinary. So Susan lives in Alberta. I'm in Saskatchewan. So it had to travel an entire province over, but it actually didn't take that long. Me and Susan were talking about this. It was pretty fast. So. Aw, you packaged this so well. Like so well. She was very concerned about how it was gonna get here. Oh, I'm so in love. Okay, guys. So if you don't know what this is, this is, again, Susan, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a black and gold philodendron, which is a, don't quote me, a philodendron melochorizum. I want to say not a uh, philodendron micans. It looks very similar to a micans, but it's not a micans. So I'm so excited. I don't own one of these at all. Like, Susan, where'd you get this from? That's my question. Like, anyone in Canada knows how impossible these plants are to get. Like, have you had this forever? <laughs> Where did you get it? Like, oh, yes, the leaves. I love the leaves. Okay, so the leaves are, you know cars that have like the double paint job where it looks blue in the light and then you drive and it looks purple in the light? That's what these leaves literally do. So they look green on this side, but if you move them, they turn purple. The bottom of the leaf looks between silver and red, depending on how you hold it. And the reason for that two-toned color is actually because there's, honestly, you'd need a microscope to see it, but there's microscopic hairs on this plant that make it 
so that it has this. Oh, it's beautiful. You have a beautiful plant. I'd love to see the whole plant. Susan, you should send me a photo of what mom looks like because I imagine if this is the size of the cutting you gave me, it was probably huge at one point. So what I'm gonna do with him is I'm going to plop him into my grow tent in a grow box, like inside of a Rubbermaid. And I'm just gonna let him chill there for a while and just help him work on root development and all that. Um, despite it not traveling that far, it's going to, and it is a little bit stressed out. It's actually not very dehydrated. If we're being totally honest, it's actually pretty well hydrated. I'm pretty impressed with that. So I'm super pumped. We're going to see what we can do with this thing. It is going to be in my home, in my life forever. It's never going anywhere. So I'm super, super happy. Thank you so much, Susan. Like I said, you're the first one ever in history to send anything to me so thank you a ton i'm so pumped i want to know where you got this from like oh my god how old is it like how long have you had it you so casually asked to send this to me and like me where i am i'm thinking this you can you can't find this plant where i am it's not simply like you just walk into a greenhouse or a plant shop here and just buy this plant it just doesn't exist so thank you so much I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Give this video a thumbs up. Say thank you to Susan and let me know what your creepy ghost stories are. I would actually love to hear them. They're like my fave. Uh, like I said, don't believe in ghosts, but I still, still love them. <laughs> don't know why. Now we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.